one of my dreams for when I finally got a basement that I could turn into a gaming room giant basement museum was I wanted to get all of these classic cards into a picture frame. And here was the spot. I wanted it right in the center. It was gonna be the centerpiece of everything. And I started Googling and I found this guy, El Matador on Imgur, Imgur, whatever you wanna call it. And I scrolled through and I kind of looked at his process of how he put this together. And this was the way I wanted to go. There was different route with having two different frames you could buy from a Walmart or Hobby Lobby. But he went out and found a custom frame and he measured it to the sleeves he had all the cards he had and i thought that looked the best just having everything onto one single frame so that's what i decided to do and here is my journey doing that how i actually did it the do's and don'ts that go a little bit more in detail than these descriptions did that that he had already put up but this was my bible for this project was el matador shouts out to him let's get started First, you're gonna need the plastic sleeves. I went with 200 here, you can go more. I wouldn't go less than that. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take your cards, and I did this the same as El Matador did. I did 17 across and nine vertical. This came to 44 and a half for me by 32 and a quarter. This might be different for you. I really suggest you getting the sleeves you want, sleeves you find, and doing that. If you find the same I, I did, they are on Amazon, just follow this to the T and I gave the entire custom frame size a size of 46 and a half by 34 and a quarter so I gave two inches of playroom on either side so an inch would be on the top bottom left and right this was just a safety precaution in case things screwed up got a little weird there and it puts a nice little black border around it so you're not right up against the frame border now that you got your measurements, head to Hobby Lobby, Michaels. I ended up going to Hobby Lobby. There were some people out front with their own frames and posters. These were not the sizes I needed, so I just went past them to the custom framing department. Tell them the dimensions that you want, so you want that space above and below. So give them the exact measurements of the mat that you're using that you want to show. And then you'll be able to choose what type of frame that you want. They'll have all those samples there for you. But they were extremely helpful during this process. I'll tell more at the end, but when they ask what you want the material to be, is glass or acrylic, do acrylic a million percent. When you go to pick up the frame, ask if you can get some wall buddies. They just gave me this pair. This is how you're going to hang the frame at the very end. And make sure you get some drywall anchors as well. Next, we'll get the same glue that El Matador had. It's this Loctite Plastics. I got six of them. I would suggest getting six of them. Something I didn't use until way too late is a protractor. Please get a very, very long one. Please just buy one and have one. It'll make your life so much easier during this project. Once you get your frame, go ahead and take a flathead and pry up the fasteners, keeping the mat behind it. And here I am basically measuring and finding the center. This was my strategy for it. Once you get that center, you can start to place the left to the right, above and beneath. So I was very particular during this whole project and you'll see that in this footage. It's pretty extreme. The links I'll go to to make sure everything is centered. Then you can get to gluing and you'll want to glue that center. That center I said is very important. Here, you'll start to see my first huge mistake I make in this project. I use way too much glue. You don't need that much, just a thin layer. I would go too little than too much to begin with and see what you need from there. You can always kind of lift up the corners and put some more glue on there but you can't take away all the glue you wasted or if you didn't do it fast enough, it's going, it's going to dry on you. So here I am placing the first one, way too much glue. That is also the best method, what El Matador had, had where you're going on the corners and you're going that center. That's what I would suggest as well. I tried to do a dot pattern here, you'll see in a little bit. It sucked, it's not the way to go. Follow the directions on that packaging. It says, and I did not read, you don't need a lot to stick this to whatever you're sticking it to. 
So just take your time. Also, when you put down that plastic bonding agent with that pin, you need to wait a little bit. I started getting a little um, impatient because there's 151 times I had to do this and it is time consuming. So I think they wait like 30 seconds or a minute, whatever they said. I started cutting that down as time went on. It was fine. It, it still bonded. I think I got it down to like 30 seconds, 20 seconds I would do it too. I don't know, somewhere around there, but just let it dry a little bit and don't take too long. Once you hit that glue on there, you need to do it quickly and then have the sleeve right in your hand, ready to go to place it down there. You know how I said to get a protractor? This is why I'm an idiot and didn't have anything around at the time and I started to use the glue packaging to keep it straight because what can happen extremely easy millimeter by millimeter is you are going to maybe go off track. You want to stay straight on the line that you're making with these sleeves. And I chose to go up and down first and then go side to side. What is important about this is every sleeve that comes after this either side is going to bounce off of that and any error that you make there is going to is going to be affected by that and so on and so forth to the point where I'm very frustrated at certain points towards the end because of this because all those mis little tiny millimeter mistakes add up I started freaking out to the point where I think that the sleeves have little even discrepancies to them the sleeve sides are not all the way exactly the same and also the way that I did them, you can kind of see that here. Of course I put it that you load it from the top. All of them are loaded from the top. But also ensure that you're not overlapping. I do overlap later on because I had to fix those discrepancies and those mistakes I had made earlier in the project where something wasn't perfectly aligned. And that's when I overlapped the card sleeves a little bit to start to make up for the mistakes in the past. You'll see that later. So after going vertical, I go left to right on the middle row columns. Yeah, the, the rows for that one, just so we have a guide. And from here, my goal is to work on each quadrant, these four quadrants. The first, I mean, the first night that I did this, I worked forever and I only got those first two quadrants done. Actually, maybe only one because of this and trying to figure out the best practices in the beginning and seeing how to even do this right took a lot out of me. I think I only did one, so don't freak out if this is taking you a long time and weekends to complete this. I only did the one and then I slammed it the next night that I worked on it and did all three, but it is time consuming. And here you can see with the protractor, I'm getting closer to the edge. I pull up the contract, er, the protractor, sorry, not the contractor. Wish I had a contract to work on this. But here is how I'm getting better making things straight, making sure they align with the cards beside them. I started gluing onto the outside edge to make sure the outside edge was good. But then I quickly learned, hey, maybe I should work from that middle and where the middle meets right there with the horizontal and vertical row because then I have two guide posts to make sure things are straight to the right of me and above it and that worked out a ton more that's what I really suggest is working from the inside out you might have some issues when you get towards that edge you want that edge to be straight uh, along the along the side if you're particular like I am but work from the inside out that's uh was really helpful once I started doing that and finally, after hours upon hours of working on this, I swear I think it took me two four hour days. I could be wrong. It felt, it was two different nights of just slamming this thing. I finally completed it. And here's my pile of screw ups. Yes, I ripped them back off the mat when things didn't align, things didn't look perfectly straight. If you are particular like I am, you're gonna have a hard time with this project. Also, if you're putting the money and you have all these cards, you want it to look nice. So you will get frustrated, but I think the end result is worth it. And now we finally get to the fun part. With this, you're maybe gonna wanna put the cards not all the way down in the sleeves, maybe push them over to the left. The reason for this, you're gonna start to see as you place the cards down, and this is where I started ripping up sleeves, is that they weren't perfectly aligned. Some stuff's gonna look a little bit off. When you're viewing this at at, an, at a distance, which everyone usually is, it's okay, but I'm a little bit 
again, particular. So I went back at this part and made sure the cards were aligned. That means flaps were going over flaps a tiny bit and to the left and right a tiny bit on top of each other so where you couldn't really notice it when the cards are in there but I wanted to make things look as best as possible. And here we are at the end. It felt so good to put that last card in. Oh my gosh. So freaking happy. But you can see here again, I'm kind of adjusting, putting it the flap is a little bit over on this one, just a tiny bit, so I'm moving that other Ivysaur card just a tiny bit over. There is a tiny bit of wiggle room that you can do to these cards once they're in the sleeve, and I just wanted everything to look uniform. And I was pretty happy with it. Once it got to that point, we were good to go. Now it's time to hang your frame. I took off the metal bracket that they had on there and put the wall buddy on here. Very helpful. You can really adjust this to make sure the frame is straight easy once you get the screw in there. You don't have to look for a hole. And here it is on the wall along with the shadow box at the top you'll see there with my couple graded cards and some packs that I have. But man, this was a dream of mine to have these cards on the wall. They look excellent. In conclusion, this project was extremely tedious and very very frustrating a lot of the time um, especially for someone like me and this is just coming from my personal um, experience and how I am with these type of projects I am a perfectionist so when I had to move these over these didn't exactly line up or whatever I'm freaking out and my wife's looking at it going it's, it's freaking okay, Zach, like, just chill out. So if you're a perfectionist, this is literal hell on my wall right now. If you are a, you, you give yourself leeway and you're nice to yourself, I think you're gonna have, you know, a frustrating time, but a good time. Like I said, frustrating with getting these things lined up, uh, now that you've seen me kind of make it process, you know, step by step, man, if, you're, if you are going to this project, if you are um, dumb enough like I was to embark on something like this, make sure that you get that middle row and that horizontal row just right. I was off by like a, a half of a millimeter on some of the stuff and it kind of, you know, the whole line started getting a little jacked up. I had to move some down. I had to move some of the bottoms up, you know, the bottoms of some sleeves under the, just over the top of the others to make it all look flush. And, and, and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. There, there's, so, there's certain things I can see, but once it's on the wall and you're stepping away and looking at it, my perfectionist self goes, are you an idiot? Like. No one's ever gonna notice that and it looks really good. Now that this thing is on the wall and it's looking like it does, like when people come down here, it's it's such a shocking um, centerpiece with all these other posters that I have up down here. It's a dream thing. It's it, it, When I first kind of came across this online or somebody had done a similar thing with having framed Pokemon cards, it was always a dream. Like, I, I wanna get all 150. I've seen, I, you know, I, I know that you know, people frame certain sets or just the base set, just the fossil set you know, have a bunch of Pikachu, Pikachus framed. All that stuff is really cool, but for me, I was like, man, that original 150 means so much to me. So that's why I did it. But yeah, I, I think it's a, it's, it's a crazy project. It's it's expensive. I mean, we're I, I kind of showed all that. It was kind of in the $300-ish range with the frame. And then this box was about 30 bucks. I'm not sure if I talked about that earlier in the video or not. So I realized I did not talk about the final cost on these items, so I'll do that now. It was for the custom frame at Hobby Lobby. It was $264.65. May vary with where you're getting sales tax or whatever. So I paid for that. For the uh, card sleeves, I paid $759 to get 200 of those. For the packs of glue, I have a receipt for what I paid for two of them. I had to go back and get more of those because they had ran out. I had to go back. Let's just say it came to a total of 23 bucks because I'm, I'm, I'm off with tax right there, but 23 bucks will get you those six glue packs you're gonna need. And here is the total right here on the screen for what I paid for everything. If I could go back and do it again, some of the mistakes I made that uh, I wanted to show, you know, throughout the process of making this video, and then now that it's at the end, it's hung up on the wall. First up, get a protractor. 
the pro and get a, get a long protractor that will go across there. It's worth the money to just get that lined up, that first row perfectly, and then you can still use the protractor on each row as you go. Second big thing I did, number two, big mistake I make while doing this that you should avoid. The glue, that, in the original document I followed online, the original web page, it said use this like sparingly. And it actually it reminded me on the package using sparingly, but I think actually on his, on his website thing it said sparingly. Um, yeah, use it sparingly. I used, I think for those two, I used all the glue um, on like two or three cards because I didn't know what sparingly meant. But that is the video. I hope you enjoyed. I know I've talked a lot. I know this has been quite the process, but I wanted to show you guys because uh, I, I hadn't found a, a video online that did it the way I was going to do it with this custom frame. I wanted to put that out there uh, to show people um, what hellish uh, things you'll have to uh, endure to get this project done. I want to give a huge, huge thanks to El Matador. El Matador on Im Imger, Imger, whatever you want to call it. That was the original, like, just looking at those photos, that was my Bible through this whole thing to kind of to figure this out. And I, I used, like, at first I was like, oh, I'm not going to do what El Matador is doing with this glue. And it, I, I got fricked up, and I went back to El Matador. I tried to do dots, fricked me up. El Matador uh, was, my, uh, was my guiding light. I hope that seeing more uh, video that I put together can help you guys kind of to, to go through it. Uh, his was just kind of gifts and pictures and stuff, and I hope I built on what El Matador. I stand on the shoulders of giants. Thank you, El Matador. So huge thank you uh, to his original, him kind of putting this together, the amount of rows you need, vertical and horizontal, all thanks to him on that. Uh, thank you, Hobby Lobby. Uh, I want a, a big thanks to them also because when I did this custom frame, they said what kind of, you know, um, do you want glass or acrylic or something, whatever plastic or whatever it was you can get on there. I think it was just glass and acrylic you can get choices on. I didn't know much about framing at all, the picture frames on this other stuff. So I said, yeah, get me glass. God love the, the person at my Hobby Lobby. And I found out when I called, I was like, hey, is this ready today? Is this, this supposed to be ready, you know, at this, at this date? And they told me they broke it and I got off the phone and I was like, oh yeah, I'm waiting on my other coworker to be here because I have to have two hands. Got off the phone with them after they had, they had said that they broke multiple pieces trying to get on there alone. I called back and said, hey, you're going to hate me. Can I get acrylic on it? And the guy said, hey, I'd feel a lot better about you getting acrylic with this thing. And I said, good. So I paid a little bit more uh, for that acrylic. Um, you can see my like final totals things. Uh, I might have put before or put right now, whatever. So this is just for future reference for you. If it's like less than a foot, I think a foot is even pushing it for a picture frame. Less than 12 inches, I think maybe even 10, 8 or something. You want to do, it's okay to do glass. Acrylic for anything else. Because if glass breaks, and that's why I called back, my gut was telling me, he's like, dude, if a kid or something, whatever, just strikes us or whatever, glass is gonna break, Charizard's gonna freaking fall out of here, Snorlax is gonna get his freaking ears cut off, it's going to be mayhem. If acrylic breaks, it doesn't shatter all over the place. It's also UV protected as well, I think 99% of UV it keeps, keeps out. And then on top of that, I think even the sleeves keep out UV. So I think you're really UV protected. Again, I'm in a basement, but uh, I think you're okay having this in most places, just not directly in front of the freaking sun or a window. I would try to stay away from. I try to stay, you know, keep it under a window or not, you know, facing sunlight directly. Even with that UV protection, it's like, man, if you if you really love these cards and and, and some of these are expensive cards, you know, and it's an expensive frame, don't frick it up. So, just that to keep mindful uh, on as well. So I think that will do it. Thank you, Hobby Lobby. Thank you, El Matador. Thank you, you for watching. And if I showed you in a cool manner how to do this, maybe it was a mess trying to, to skip around this video. I don't know. But please like the video if you actually enjoyed it. And give us a follow. Uh, Joey Bros, we like to do a gaming podcast, gaming TV shows, movies we talk about each month. Other videos go up, I uh, review action figures, I talk about games, we do live reactions of gaming events. All that fun stuff goes on on the channel and sometimes I do a project that has me beating my head against the wall. For the sake of myself to see, hey, can I do this? And for the sake of you, that if you want to figure out how to do it yourself. So thank you guys for watching and until the next, 
Very hard project. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.